Um, welcome, welcome, welcome. I'm with um, my friend Kat and we're working on my book. So plus I need to do an ohm show. So I'm going to make this a two for one. <laughs> Um, so we're recording this for Ohm and I'm going to share my story. I was just, it's been like three weeks since we've recorded and I was reading the transcript through and I left off of why I came here and why I'm here. So why am I here? I, I'm here in service. I'm here to help. I'm here to help you get into your power to understand that you are the creator of your life to help you change your program so that you can know all of this. And I am going through this too, because I'm plugged into a computer programs of all these programs that I came into and I'm working through them. So as I work with you to help you shift, I'm also shifting myself and my own belief systems. And as we do that, I know that we are changing the collective consciousness belief systems. Because when we heal ourselves, we heal everyone. We heal everyone around us and it just spreads throughout the whole world. So really all you got to do is work on you. You don't have to work on anybody else to make a difference in the world. Just by you focusing on you to make you a better person, you help the whole world become a better place to live because we are the creators of the world. We're the creators of what happened. And if you look outside yourself and you see things you don't like, just send it love. Don't fight it. You can't win by fighting it because then you're adding to the energy. Send it love. I love you. I love you. I love you. I love you. Send everything love and every one love. And when you love yourself, then you can truly start loving the world. You know, I was going to do a class on tip the scowl and really changing how you are in the world. And a lot of people aren't ready for that because they're still so much in suffering inside themselves that how can they even begin to think about the world when themselves are suffering or frustrated or overwhelmed or being bombarded by fear messages and it just deleting their energy i get it been there done that and it keeps getting better because i keep working on myself but i continue to work on myself I work on myself a couple times a week at least. I try to give myself 20 minutes where I go lock myself. I have an infrared sauna and I go sit in there and I work on myself for 20 minutes every day, at least almost five days a week. Um, it's important to give ourselves that time and to love ourselves. And by doing so, we're helping the whole world by us changing ourselves. And I just keep feeling better and better and, and truly more calm, more relaxed, not so much in a hurry, really living more day by day and knowing everything's gonna be okay. Yeah, um, describe it as floating, just float, be free, float. Just speak louder. Be free and float. I describe it as floating. Just float. Yeah. Nothing so to describe do. just floating. Being at a place in yourself and the environment around you where everything's at peace <clears throat> and you just kind of float with it like you're a feather in the wind. You just vibe with it. Um, no outside stressors anymore and even if they do come up they're there's instantly resolved i don't yeah because you get spun out and stuff and it sucks you in and keeps spinning you around and around and around until you go wait a minute stop i'm done with this i don't want to do this anymore right and then you step out of it and when you do that it just dissolves 
Yeah, completely. The energy is completely gone. It's shifted. It's somebody else's problem now. <laughs> somebody else's what? Problem now. Um, I don't really mean that or wish that upon anybody. It was just a. But you don't have to play in it. And there's there's millions of yeah. those programs out there to get you sucked into. Yeah. And they're like being bar being bombarded into the collective consciousness. The program that we're all plugged into. Because there is a motherboard for consciousness in the 3D world. And then there's a motherboard for the 5D and then the 6D and then the 7D and then the universal multi blueprint, which we just did in a practitioner's training. Yeah. It took us three months to do the one class because it was the energy was so intense. But since that class, I'm more calm. Oh, yeah, me too so much more everything's just clicked into place you know yeah <clears throat> how do you really know what realm or what dimension you're in how do you know the difference that's you don't unless you ask and you're going in between dimensions you're just going up higher i live in the 3d world yeah, I know. Well, I live in the 3D. You no, know, but am I operating in the 5D much better? I'm pretty much unplugged from the planetary belief systems. Yeah. I'm out of the mind matrix. It doesn't control me. I live here, but it doesn't control my thoughts or consume my energy. It tries to get back in, you know, and I recognize it and say no. Yeah. That's really hard in the beginning, though, because you, you're so used to that energy, even if it's negative energy, to go out of that. You know, you, you keep attracting more negativity because that's what your body wants to go back to. It's natural to go back into what you're familiar Something with. Something that creates that energy. Yeah. It's, it's really like you see people patterns. Mm -hmm. You know, they do. You know, they have a blow up. Some people every day, some people every week, some people every month. Some people once or twice a year and that's it. But they yeah. still, they're building up and building up and then they they have to do whatever it is they do to create that energy, right? Mm -hmm. Of something they're used to, even though it's not positive. I watch people do this. My husband does this a couple of times a year yeah. or once a year. And this time I told him, um, <clears throat> I'm going to go work on myself, but I'm going to go work on you too. Just to let you know you're being included. <laughs> and he says, okay. Um, yeah. I mean, it's not a big deal, you guys. Just sometimes he gets spun out in energy. It's because of these um, people in this human existence. They well, yeah, and what you're reading split. and what you're plugging into, you know what I mean? Because we don't talk about media in the house. Right. We don't, we, we do not talk about media and what's going on at all. Unless it's like a big earthquake somewhere or something, mm -hmm. then it'll be mentioned. But we don't watch the news. We don't discuss politics. We don't discuss religion, although he's not really. Actually, we're pretty good on that, um, which is good. And we still have a good relationship. You know, and that's a point I want to make um, because everybody's, oh, you have to have a spiritual guy. You know, and for a long time, I thought I had to have a spiritual guy, but I thought about it and I said, no, the skills I need in a guy is um, um, business background, what I can't do. That's the skills I need in someone. And, and I made a conscious decision that his belief systems didn't have to coincide with mine. And he's very science driven. We're totally opposite in so many of those things. Um, but we still have a good relationship and still love each other. 
we just talk about different stuff. And the reason I want to bring that up is because I know some people leaving their spouse because they don't believe the way they do. Or they can't handle talking to them. You know, I already, I got into this relationship um, four years ago. And, um, and I'm totally okay that he doesn't believe the way I do. It doesn't bother me at all. And when I have an issue with us, I go work on myself and it changes. Right. The whole you know? energy shifts. <clears throat> the whole energy shifts. It doesn't shifts. matter if he believes everything anyway. Everybody. Mm -hmm. Well, people have different beliefs and that's yeah, okay. Not everybody is supposed to believe the same thing and you know, all of that. We're, we're all different. But if we all believe the same thing, then what would we learn? Exactly. There's, there what would we teach? You know, so we're all here to have our own experiences. And we're all here to grow and we're all here to learn. And everybody on planet Earth is doing their part. They're doing what they're supposed to be doing. With where they're at in their belief systems and the roles they're playing there's nobody evil on this planet do they do evil things yeah but that's part of their roles to teach us you know if you listen to Loris Cannon she said that um Hitler went to heaven he didn't go to hell he went to heaven because <laughs> he didn't believe he did anything wrong and that truly it's ourselves that send us into hell if we have that experience, but it's all the same level. Heaven and hell are the same level. Mm -hmm. And heaven and hell, can you go there after planet earth and then be reincarnated? Yeah, from both, from heaven and hell. Mm -hmm. They're all the same dimension. And and um, going off on the same, same levels, same dimension, there's no difference. Um, I was taken into hell. I was in um, Puerto Morales and I was doing three days of silence. I was by myself and I was doing three days of silence and Torth came to me and he says, I want to take you into hell. And I said, no, <laughs> he says, I want to take you into hell. And I said, no, I said, why do you want to take me into hell? And he says, well, let's put it this way. If you were everything and nothing can hurt you, then you're safe, right? And I said, right. And he says, well, then come with me. Mm -hmm. And he took me to hell. And it was the same level as heaven. This happened over a couple of days before he talked me into it, right? And I went. <laughs> and I found out that it was all the same level and people were just acting out what they believed they deserved. And, and then I learned that they're both reincarnation lines. We don't have to go in the reincarnation line and come back here. I mean, yeah, we're in heaven or hell and we learn and we grow um, while we plan to come back. But we don't have to come back here. You don't have to keep repeating the reincarnation here on this planet. You can leave. When you die, go through the central sun. Don't go into the white light. Two, that's the reincarnation line for heaven and hell. Go into the central sun. I had a friend of mine. He was from India. I, I met him. I don't remember where I met him on. I think I met him online. He was a friend of a friend of mine. And um, he came to visit me when he was out here from India. And, um, and he went back to India and shortly he died and I knew he died. And about three weeks later, he came to me. I said, what are you doing? What's up? You know? Mm -hmm. And he says, I want to know where to go. I don't want to reincarnate here. Where do I go? I said, Oh, that's easy. Go into the central sun. He said, thank you. And took off. It was gone. <laughs> it was so interesting. Um, so you don't have to come back here. 
Is there like a soul trap? Yeah, kind of. It's called heaven and hell. <laughs> but you you re reincarnate from either one. You come back here. But at the same time, if you're in that space and you decide you don't want to reincarnate and you want to go on from there, you can. So you're not trapped. You can always leave. Like you hear about people being in hell and they want to leave and, and they, they get right with God, meaning, hey, God, get me out of here. What am I doing? I don't want to do this anymore. And they leave. Mm -hmm. We teach that Acoustic Records, um, heaven and hell training where you're in those realms and working with people i freed my uncle i went and talked to him he was in hell he was a partier he loved to party he didn't do anything wrong but he was raised that was all a sin so he felt guilty about the way he lived his life and he just had a good time <laughs> a really really good time. i know <laughs> what Actually, it sounds like a couple people I know. Yeah, exactly. So I went in and talked to him. I said, you don't have to be here. And he left. It was cool. Anyways, um, we need to take a break. We'll be right back. Do you want to go deeper into sacred activations, which is a subconscious metaprogramming process? Tamara Oviat is inviting you to visit her website at tamaraoviat.com to sign up and get lifetime access to three free activations that you can listen to anytime you want or as often as you need. If you like what Tamara does and like to incorporate sacred activations into your life, she also offers live webinars, master classes, and practitioners training to further support your healing, manifestations, and expansion. There are hundreds of activations on her website that address different aspects of your life, money, health, relationships, intuitive abilities, and more. Head over to her website at tamraoviat.com and experience the magic of sacred activations. Thank you for listening. Hey, everybody. Welcome back. Okay, so we left off um, talking about the collective consciousness and how there's all these different programs you can plug into. Um, and the good news is, is you don't have to plug into them. And when you recognize them and, and clear out those belief systems, I do it with sacred activations is how I do it. Um, it just keeps changing and life keeps getting better and better and better and better. Mm -hmm. Um, what do you have to say about that, Kat? Well, there's a lot of fear mongering in society and it's been fed to us our entire lives and it's, it's hard to get out of it and to be free of it because all those doubts always come in. But the fact is the earth and the world is not going to end. There is no revelations happening. It's, it's perpetuated fear that's been drilled into us as a species for years thousands of years keeping keeping us down keeping us from being our true authentic selves you know yeah absolutely well it's just it, again that's one of the programs that's playing out that a lot of people believe in that's yeah, why i think i drama. talked about it's yeah, hard like for so somebody, many people to get out of that drama because it feeds and it there's so much energy to it. It's like an addictive thing. It's like well, it is addictive. It drama, is sickness, drugs. They're all addictive. Emotions. They're addictive, and it's we want to play them out every day though. because we're used to it. Yeah, it's recognizing. Yeah, pulling yourself back and going, wait a minute, I don't want to buy into this, and you can have a completely different life. You're all the things that previously would upset you or give you anxiety, they just go away. They just, they're not there anymore. And the more often you do it, the better each time you shift, you shift higher level and you no longer experience those things. But you have to work on yourself in order to do it. Yes. And there's those times <laughs> where you do it for so long and then you um 
kind of get sucked back into that fear a little bit and you stop working on yourself and then you realize, oh my God, and it's been six months and oh shit, I haven't evolved. Uh, it's time I can shift again now. In the beginning, it's really time consuming because you you want to revert back. It's, it's part of your genetics, that DNA that um, you just want to keep part of that program. It's really hard to pull away, but it's worth it to pull away. <clears throat> yeah. You have to, well, you don't have to. I mean, you can live any type of life you want to live, but if you're done struggling, yeah, being sick, being in broken relationships, being in pain or sorrow or fear all the time, work to take the time to work on yourself every day. Mm -hmm. Even if it's five minutes, you know, 95% of your life is ran by your subconscious programming. We all, most of us know that by now, mm -hmm. if we're evolved at all, mm -hmm. well, change your subconscious programming. And then the more you change your subconscious programming, the more your life automatically goes in a better, more helpful way. But you're the one programming it. Mm -hmm. And from zero to seven, it's not your fault. You were learning how to live on this planet and you were getting programs from your family, from society, from your school, from everyone. Mm -hmm. And you were learning how to live. And then now that you're conscious, you got to go back and change those programs. And when you go back and change those, because you can't manifest, you can't use affirmations and change things. No. It really doesn't work. Matter of it, fact, I think it does opposite. Some activation or some affirmations you say and you don't totally believe in it, then you're causing more harm because you're going, I don't believe this. Exactly. It's like you're a magnet for everything. And um, there's always resistance with that. You don't want to change, you know, and and right. there's a feeling of negativity oh. associated with that affirmation. So if you have negativity associated with that affirmation, you got to go work on why. Right. Because you'll never create it unless you change the belief system. Yeah. You, it's all fear-based. Well, everything's fear-based or yeah. love-based. But what keeps people from moving forward or from seeing things, it's it's always generated around fear, fear of change, fear of, you know, losing something. Fear keeps people. Or someone. From, yeah. Fear keeps people from moving forward. Yeah. That's In all ways of their lives. Yeah. So we were talking about the collective consciousness and, and how it has that energy and that power and all those different programs that you can plug into and unplug. Mm -hmm. Now the, the positive programs are um, like you're saying, to be able to stay in that energy, it takes practice. You have to practice plugging into that energy, practice plugging into that energy, mm -hmm. practice mm -hmm. on plugging into a healthy body, a loving relationship, abundance and a peaceful world practice those things feel them i was listening to a greg braden interview the other day where he was talking about when he was interviewing this um indian man about rain he says what do you do manifest rain he goes no if you're manifesting rain then you're saying rain is in here what i do is i feel myself standing in the mud in mud on my feet. I feel the drops of water hitting me. Mm -hmm. I imagine mm -hmm. that it's here right now and I embody it now. Mm -hmm. And really that's how we have to go along to create things we desire. Yeah, we yeah. already have the big bank account. Mm -hmm. We already have the love of our lives. Mm -hmm. We already have the healthy body. And, and feel that and see that and spend time in that. And when you're doing that, then you're creating these new energies and these new knowings for your subconscious mind to create that for you, because that is an emotion you like. 
So then it starts going to work to bring you all of that. But if you're in the belief systems, oh, I'll never find the right man. Right. Then happens. you never will find the right man. Or if you spend too much energy thinking about it instead of feeling it, it'll never happen. Feel it and feel you're going to be in a relationship. That's what I did about my, I knew I had a soulmate coming in. I knew I did. Yeah. And I felt it and I knew it. I didn't know it was going to be Mike. I did. You told me it was going to be Mike, <laughs> but I couldn't believe it was going to be Mike because it hurt so much. Uh -huh. And I didn't think it was possible. So when it was Mike and we hooked up in Florida and we dated in California, it just blew me away. And, um, but I knew I yeah, wasn't your body knew it was going to be happening and you could feel some, it was, it was. Yeah. I wasn't evolving. sites or anything. I mean, I tried it a couple times and it's been, I just knew when it was supposed to happen, it would happen. Mm -hmm. And then I just, I did the, um, timeline and parallel universe class and totally healed, um, past relationships and changed those programs. And then I was ready for Mike to come in. Yeah. Because we had been in my life twice before I blew it off. I couldn't handle it. I couldn't handle the love. So when I healed that myself, which was really cool, I did that in Mexico. It's in the Timeline and Parallel Universe book. I'm not going to get into it now. But um, yeah, it made me ready for Mike. Do you know how long that time took? How was it months? Was it a year? Was it weeks? Days? From the timeline of parallel universe class? From when you decided, when you started feeling somebody was coming in, when you knew that that part was all healed? Oh, I knew they were ready. coming in for years. And, you know, I dated a couple different guys, but they never lasted long because I knew it wasn't right. Right. So I'd break it off. Yeah. So, um, and, but pretty much during those 24 years, I was single. Yeah. I probably had four months of relationships, maybe five in 24 years. That's about. With just a couple different people. Yeah. Because I knew that it wasn't them. So why waste their time? And your own. I could take the date. I wasn't interested. Mm-hmm. Mr. Right now just doesn't work for me. You know what I mean? Yeah. 100%. So, but I'm glad I was single all that time. I learned so much about myself. I had such a good experience. So many different experiences that you wouldn't have had had you had been. I traveled for eight years. Right. After my kids got out of school and I started working online. I lived in England six months a year and, and then I was going to Mexico and, you know, I was going over there quite a few times before I ended up moving here. Um, so it allowed me to do all of that. And in a relationship, I wouldn't have been able to do that. And would right. I be teaching what I'm teaching if I was in that relationship earlier? Probably not. No. Because I mean, I was pushed to go to England. I had no choice. I had to move out of my house. Um, my house was in foreclosure. Um, and I thought I was going to England to start a new life and to get married, but I didn't really feel like I was, it was just weird. But when I went over there and went to the Roslyn Chapel, I mean, I had $200 in my account. Mm -hmm. when I went over there and I ended up staying for eight months That's and I thought I was staying for three weeks and I thought maybe I was going to marry this guy I thought he was my savior you know what I mean but I ended up staying um eight months um thank god for that and if I hadn't gone through that foreclosure that would have never happened yeah 
So, you know, whatever is happening, there's usually a reason behind it. Yeah, because you want to shift and the universe makes it happen. It's, it's like if you're not taking the steps to do it. You and if I had a house to take care it. of, I would have been home taking care of the house. I wouldn't have been living in England yeah. and 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 um, Spain and Italy, you know, traveling all around there and, and really connecting and learning if I had a house to take care of. So I had to be free of that. Yep. I needed that time. And I really needed the eight, last eight years or those eight years of... Yeah. You needed to heal cool. and to grow and to become who yeah. you are. And now you have the perfect relationship. He he supports you. And I mean, he may not believe in all the same things, but he believes in you. It so not matter. No, he believes he in me. you and your abilities. And he is very supportive. And he, yeah, it's a perfect. Yeah, he loves me. Yeah. See the flowers in the house. If you're watching the video and not reading this, he always brings me flowers. Very rare am I without flowers. There's two bouquets in the living room too. It's one in the kitchen, one in the living room. Do you ever get sick of them? <laughs> you, don't huh? get, you don't get sick of having fresh flowers in your house all the time? God, no. Oh, it's, it's nice because you have other people to, like your housekeeper, to dump them when they start getting all flower pieces all over the floor. Yeah, I, I, I don't sweep. <laughs> <laughs> I know, I know, I know you, you don't, yeah, so that would be my I'm thing. thankful, I'm so thankful oh, I'm I have sure, help. Yeah, you're so blessed, you are very fortunate. You go, girl. Thank you. you. Anything. You deserve it. And, thank you. And it's funny because it's a life I saw for myself. You know, yeah, once I mean, you, once you see it, like I've seen yeah. myself a few times, and once you see it, it's set. It's it's stamped there. You're and six months later, yeah. you're like, wow, it's all come. To I always saw me. myself with my office oceanfront. Me being able to see the ocean from my office. Mm -hmm. I didn't realize. It was going to be on a beach in the in Mexico, but I, I, my dream was always to live oceanfront, and here I am, and I own it. I just paid it off. Yeah, it's amazing. I remember you always and, asking me where you were going to live, and one time it would be up north, and then next it would be Florida, and then it would be somewhere else, and you would get frustrated, like, well, where am I going to end up? And isn't that funny how you went to everywhere? <laughs> Here I am. I went everywhere. I tried Oregon a couple times. Yeah. I tried Florida a couple times. Well, the last time I went to Florida, when I left Mexico in 2019, I went to Florida to help my son's daughter. I didn't know where I was going. I had no clue. I just knew I had to stay there for a while and help her. Mm -hmm. And that was a plan. Mm -hmm. So while I was there, um, is I ran into Mike. Yeah, conveniently, he was also in Florida. Yeah. And where we live, it's funny because I was with a friend of mine and we were driving down here and we went and had lunch a couple miles from where I live. And I just had this feeling. And now I know why. Yeah. Because <laughs> I was going to live here because I was thinking that I was going to go back to Mexico and I wanted to figure out how to live here. Mm -hmm. And I was planning on, I picked out Puerto Morelos. But when I was down here, I thought I'd really love to live here, but I wouldn't want to live here um, a single person. Right. Because it's too quiet. You know what I mean? And it is. It's really quiet. It's really quiet. I mean, we see people out on the beach and swimming and stuff, but it's not big groups. Yeah. And really um, lonely if you were out by yourself. Yeah. We live in a small town. You know, I mean, we can go get it in town and get essentials and stuff. Um, but we have to go like 45 minutes to do any major grocery shopping. But luckily, Merit is there and we've got Costco. We've got huge malls and grocery stores. It's a super, super nice city. And it's like a 45 minute drive. Yeah. So that's really nice. But where we live is super quiet. 
So I was planning on living over in Puerto Morelos side, but, um, you know, You're with Mike, I, now. I said, I know exactly where we're going. Mm -hmm. And we came over here and he fell in love with it too. So I just absolutely love living here. We're supposed to be talking about 2024 and beyond. Okay, so 2024 and beyond. Um, 2024, we're waking up so much, you guys. It's so important for us just to keep unplugging from the drama that you see playing out in the world and send it love. It's so important to be the creators of our lives and what we want to see. And that's not about draining our energy and putting it out there to save the world. We got to work on ourselves. We have to be at peace within us. We have to have abundance within us. We have to have health within us, love within us. And it spreads in the world. We are the creators of this world and we're creating what's happening. And it's, it's the collective consciousness, you know, it's a big program and there's people that know how to program it and they are, they're thrown in their fear. They're thrown in their suffering. They're throwing everything they possibly can at you. Right. Cause they're trying to keep the fear, but they're not bad people. They're just playing their parts. And our job is to recognize what it is and let it go and not plug into it and not feed it. And focus on creating the life you want to live. This year's going to be crazy. But it's going to be even been. better. Two months in. It's, it's getting, and it's going to get more wild. And then 20, 2025, so many more people are going to be disconnected from it. And it's going to continue to change. And we do get peace on earth. I know we do. Mm -hmm. But we have to focus on that. And if there's nobody signs up to fight a war, then there's nobody to fight a war. Exactly. Do you understand? <clears throat> and there's no reason for a war. It just it just keeps the chaos. And this planet has always been at war. And a lot of people say we're better than we ever have been, and we are. But we got to keep seeing that and knowing that and creating love and not supporting the war, not supporting the fights. Mm -hmm. We can't put our energy into it. We have to put the energy of peace, love, joy, and happiness in and keep that our focus. And that collective consciousness control, you know, when I did the Out of the Mind Matrix class in 2018, um, I was shown a watermelon and this, I was shown this is fear. And then I was shown a blueberry and I was shown this is unconditional love. Well, and then we go back to, you know, which wolf is the strongest, the wolf you feed the most, right? Mm -hmm. So it's the same thing with our belief systems and the collective consciousness. Yeah, it's really easy to get spin out and get stuck in fear because it's such a huge energy where that truth awakening and knowing is the size of a blueberry. Well, when we continue to plug into the peace, love, joy, happiness, abundance, and health, it starts to grow and the blueberry gets bigger. And what happens is the watermelon, that energy starts shrinking and it's easier and easier not to be plugged into. Mm -hmm. So that's how we change the world. That's how we get world peace. And that's the path we're on. The wars will just continue to go away. And, and the fears will no longer work and all of that will just fall apart. But it's up to us to change that. It's up to us to make that change. And how do we do it? Don't plug into it. Don't give it your energy. You've got to plug into peace, love, joy, and happiness. And anytime anything crazy happens, send it love. Don't live in fear. Yeah, don't I saw this image in 2012. Seen it a couple of times. 2012, when I was in Italy, I saw a war all around me and I saw me sitting in peace and all this craziness going around me. And I saw it again. Um, and again, the same image. And I want to share that with you now, no matter what's going on, hold the peace. Just hold the peace. 
And Greg Braden talks about the square root of 1%. You know, that they, they did studies where the square root of 1% of a town focused on peace and the crime rate went down during that time. Mm -hmm. So just you, no matter where you are, if you hold that peace within you, it affects the square root of 1%. So what is that? How many people are you affecting and bringing peace to in their lives? Do you understand? I mean, and other people talk about we're tapestries, we're, we're, we're threads in the tapestry of the collective consciousness, and we are. Mm -hmm. So when we change our collective consciousness, our subconscious programming into peace, love, joy, and happiness, it starts to ripple through the whole world. So don't think you have to go out and speak out to be the change. No, it's the vibration that you put out. The vibration you put out, exactly. So if you focus on that yourself, it spreads. So you don't have to go demonstrate. You don't have to say what's going on in the 3D world. It doesn't matter what's going on in the 3D world. What matters is, is where your focus is. Is it on peace, love, joy, happiness, and abundance? And if it's not, work on that. If you're out of discord, work on that. I work on myself, I was saying earlier, you know, four or five days a week. I work on myself. I work on changing my programs. And then I notice it's gone. It doesn't always instantly happen. But sometimes three days, three weeks later, I'm all, oh, that doesn't bother me anymore. Oh, that's gone. And a lot of times I don't even remember it. I'm on to the next thing that I'm clearing. And, That's and, and totally what I do. I forget. Five minutes into it, I don't even know why I'm doing it. I was like, what, what was that about? Yeah. But time. you disconnect that belief system or that problem, and then it no longer bothers you. So what do you have to say about 2024 and beyond? I don't know. I, I'm just accepting and floating. I've put it out there what I want and I've, I've seen it in my mind's eye. I've actually seen myself receiving it. So I know that it's there and I know that it's in the works and I just continue to go on and I don't think about it much. I just trust. No. I trust in the I try and keep my vibration even keeled. You know, I don't get sucked up into drama. Good. Or, yeah. Somebody else having a issue. <clears throat> I don't know. Great things are happening. Yeah. It just keeps getting better and better all the time, doesn't it? It does. Yeah. I'm totally so from who I was four years ago. Yay. Yeah. You're I'm, welcome. Yeah, thank you. I've said thank you many times. Um, it's I'm actually exposed now and I'm not in fear anymore. I was so caught in into my past and negativity and what other people thought about it and judging me and it doesn't even come in my mind anymore. I don't care. I'm good. good with me. And I'm I've gotten really good um feedback and I it makes me feel good. I feel like I am living my authentic self now. And that's the most important thing. Being your true yeah. authentic self. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. And that's one reason why I'm sharing the Did you freeze up? Uh, I live in Yucatan, Mexico, and sometimes the power goes out. Yeah, you you froze up for a second, didn't you? Yeah. So thank you for sharing that, cat. Yeah, just live in your authentic self. Um, Kat started doing sacred activations four years ago. And it's been so much fun to watch her change. 
And it's so much fun to watch myself change. I just keep changing and getting better and better. And my life keeps getting better and better. Mm -hmm. And um, I'm able to be at service more, mm -hmm. you know, because that's why I'm here. The thing about shifting yeah. yourself, it shifts. Oh, I people. can't even hear you. My speaker's off. You froze up again. Oh, there we go. I was All right. To reiterate the fact that when you shift, you're not paying attention to forcing your beliefs or forcing other people or to shift or working on them. If you work on yourself, they actually shift with you because it's the vibration. If they're attracted to you and they want to be in your vibration, they will be there. And yeah. they shift too. My kids have totally shifted. My spouse has totally shifted. My dog's energy is different. Everybody is just completely evolved. And it's amazing. So yeah. all it takes is you working on yourself. Yeah, you got to work on yourself. Exactly, exactly. My husband's totally shifted. Our relationship just keeps getting better and better and better. And at mm -hmm. the beginning, it was a little rocky. <laughs> it was a little rocky. It was because you guys hadn't been in relationships for so long. And both of you guys had trust issues and abandonment issues. So it was yeah. you working on yours. Wait, yeah, I worked on myself and it helped him clear himself. Mm -hmm. I want to share something about my youngest son, Kendall. Um, I offered to work with him for a couple of weeks and he agreed. And after a second session, um, he got two jobs <laughs> and um, he's doing really good. And he just keeps getting better and better. I'm just watching him evolve. He came, he was out here a year ago um, with me mm -hmm. um, and and did a lot of sacred activations. And then now a year later, I see him, he's changed so much and he's meditating, he's working on himself. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's so cool. I'm so proud of him and I'm so happy for him. And he's just really amazing guy. And to see him flourish like this, I'm really, really, really excited. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> yeah, so you guys don't give up. Don't get overwhelmed. Take time to work on yourself. You know, how whatever it is, you know, sacred activations, I'm here for you. Um, get on the website, get the free downloads, free activations. Go to my YouTube channel or my other channels. Listen, because in almost every session, um, I'm running sacred activations or I have my teachers. There's a lot of sessions on there with my teachers and they're all very good. And they also run sacred activations. Um and then Kat and I, you can find um, um, a couple interviews with Kat and I on there and we run sacred activations. So make sure you take the time to work on yourself. And if you're not attracted to sacred activations, use something else. But just make sure you give yourself time yeah, and love yourself good. and love everybody. Love everybody. Um, so don't go into fear on what might happen or what people are telling you that's going to happen. Don't spend your time on that. Spend your time on peace, love, joy, and happiness. I mean, really, that's how I'd like to close out this book. Um, as you guys saw, I did some hypnosis sessions and um, put those in there. So this conversation is after those. So I think a lot of the information you needed about me um, about being a walk-in was answered during that. I don't know. I don't go back and listen to it. This isn't it scripted. Um, my process is my process and it's been a lot of learning, mm -hmm. but truly I'm a higher aspect of Tamara. Really, truly. Um, yeah, I'm from arc twos. And when I took, when I, um, integrated, um, I still have all Tamara's belief systems, but a lot of them shifted and a lot of the fears left right away, mm -hmm. which is really, really good. And I say Tamara, but it's still an aspect of me. So I want you to understand that. And there's a lot of walk-ins on this planet. 
There's a lot of walk-ins on this planet. And we're here in service. And the ones of you that are confused, keep working on yourself because you've got programming you walked into that you've got to work with. So mm -hmm. don't spin out. Don't get confused. Get in your power and work on yourself. And you don't have to be a walk-in to evolve. Yeah. Um, so if you're reading this, just, you know, some people, one of my practitioners wow. said, you know, she wanted to walk in. It's like, you don't need a walk in to heal. You can heal, you know, so, um, take your power back, be in your power and be true to yourself. And if you're a walk in, I get it. It's confusing, but you're here for a reason. And you're here to help shift consciousness of the planet. And I know the programming on this planet can be very, very confusing and overwhelming. Um, I mean, I was here for many, many years observing um, before having to live this. And um, I'm thankful for that time. But... Um, don't get confused about the lack of love you feel or anything else. Everybody's loving you the most they know how to. And you can connect into your source and feel that love and be able to radiate that love out to others without losing yourself. Mm -hmm. And you're here to bring that love in. It's all you got to do. Maybe your job is just to smile people on street corners and say hi. Have a good day. Yeah, that's a lot of people thing. Don't. Keep making a person's entire day, week, month, year. You know, there's yeah, people they might that are so lonely. someone smile at them for a year. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, just smiling at someone and saying have a good day is huge. Really, really huge. It is. Anyways, <laughs> um, I love you guys. Thank you for joining us today, Kat. Thank you so much for, for doing this with me. I've got Kat's information in the book. If you want to contact her, she's absolutely incredible, intuitive, um, really amazing person. She's really helped me over the years. Oh, I love you, Kat. Love you too. All right, you guys, love you. Have a good night, good day.